Now uh, we are continuing our discussion with the previous problem and the previous problem was about to find the majority element. Now we have already seen two approaches to find the majority element. So, so the first approach that was related to uh, using loops. Now that approach was taking order of n square time. The second approach that we have seen that was take, taking order of n log n time. Now in this case we are going to use or see the third algorithm which is the Murray's voting algorithm. The Murray's voting algorithm and this algorithm is going to take order of n time. So obviously this algorithm as you can see it is taking less time as compared to the previous two algorithms. So this algorithm is better than as compared better than both of these two algorithms. So that was the time complexities time complexity but if you discuss about the space complexity in the first algorithm the space complexity was order of 1 but the second algorithm the space complexity was order of n because it was using the binary search tree so in worst case that's that will take out of n time now this Murray's voting algorithm is actually much more efficient in terms of time complexity as well as the space complexity so this Murray voting algorithm is taking order of n as the time complexity as well as it is also taking order of 1 as the space complexity which is a much better improvement as compared to the previous case. Now let us see what is this algorithm. So in this algorithm it is a two step process as you can see the first step says that gives the element that may be the majority. Now here mark the words it is saying may be majority element. We are not definite, we are not definite or we are not sure or we are not sure whether it is a majority element or not. Now if there is a majority element in an array then this step will definitely return it. If there is a majority it will definitely return it. But if there is no majority element then it will return candidate of majority element. This is important candidate of majority element that means that element might not be a majority element but that element might be a candidate to be a majority element. So after checking our checking this uh, we will definitely know that whether uh, there is a majority element exist or not. If does not exist then is there any candidate to a majority element but again we have to apply a checking algorithm or you can say the checker to see uh, to check the element that we got is a majority element or not okay now let us see the algorithm and we'll try to apply that algorithm step by step okay now let us look at this algorithm which is about finding the candidate as re remember that we have two steps the step one is to find the candidate candidate of majority element the candidate of majority element and the step two was to verify whether it is a majority element or not whether it is a majority element majority element or not okay or not so we are doing the step one this entire pseudo code is actually representing the step one now just ignore this pseudocode for the first time let me explain you how it is working step by step assuming that we have an array like this which may be having some majority element so it is having 4 4 1 0 4 4 4 3 4 index locations are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and let us say we have one more index location which is having the value 2 which is 9 now you can clearly see that here 4 is the majority element but how this algorithm is working that is an interesting fact that is very interesting actually so what we are going to do is we are going to maintain two variables one is count and second one is i okay we have count and i now initially the value of count i mean initially when we are going to point to this location will store the value of i as 0. Now it's very interesting just it's a little bit tricky just focus on this what I'm saying. At index location 0 we have a value 4 so we are going to make the count as 1. Okay. 
now increment this pointer don't change the value of i i is just pointing to the first first index location till now this i is still pointing here okay and this is j now the second location is having 4 therefore 4 has already appeared once and this value which is stored in i and the value which is stored in j both, both are equal therefore we are going to increment the value of count as 2 again increment the value of j here okay so what we are going to do if a of i is equal to a of j then increment the value of count okay if a of i is not equal to a of j then if count not equal to 0 then decrement count minus minus else if count equal to 0 then we are going to make count is equal to 1 and i is equal to j i mean we are going to equal their values what do i, what do I mean to say by this is here you can see that at this position we have 1 and the first i is pointing to 4 1 is not equal to 4 therefore we are going to decrement the value of count as 1 now again increment the value of j okay now this value 0 is not equal to count i mean this value 0 is not equal to 4 hence again decrement the value of count as 0 okay remember that i have not incremented count till now again increment the value of j now this value 4 is equal to the first index location value which is 4 therefore increment the count as 1 again increment the value of j now this 4 is equal to the value which is pointed by i therefore we are going to make the value as 2 again increment the value of j now this 4 is again equivalent to the first index location therefore we are going to make the count as 3 again increment the value of j so this value 3 is not equal to 4 hence because count is not 0 so we are going to decrement this value as 2 again increment the value of j now this 4 is equal to the first index location we are going to increment the value as 3 again increment the value of j now this value is 2 which is not equal to the first value so we are going to make the value of count as 2 now after the end of this entire loop out of the end of this entire loop check out what is the value of count now the value of count is 2 now because count is greater than 1 because count is greater than 1 or greater than or equal to 0 greater than 0 not equal to 0 if count is greater than 0 therefore there is a candidate of a majority and therefore there exist there exist a candidate for majority element for majority element now what is that candidate that candidate is represented by 4 hence there might be a majority element okay now in some cases it might happen that there is no candidate of there is no majority element in that case we have to see that scenario also but here after applying this entire loop after apply this find candidate method we have to check whether the element that we found is a majority element or not now we are going to apply the second step which is about the verification uh, whether there is a majority element or not we will see that verification algorithm soon but let me see let me give you one more example where this actually fails okay let me show you one more example here for this case so the second example let us say we have this array which is having the values 4 0 1 2 9 3 1 4 2 and we have let us say 3 and 5 okay now uh, let me make it 6 okay now we have this array which is a again we are going to maintain count and we are going to maintain i and we are going to have j so initially j is pointing here and i is pointing here so count which is 4 i is initially pointing to next location 0 okay so count is initially storing one that is 4 is appearing only one time now again uh, you see j 
point the element which is pointed by j is not equal to the element which is pointed by i because j is pointing here therefore we are going to decrement the value of count okay again increment j now j is pointing to this location and this value is not equal to 4 and you know that value of count is 0 so when the value of count is 0 then we have to make i point to this location and we have to make count as 1 so i is now pointing to next location 2 again increment the value of j so j is pointing to this location now here the value which is pointed by j is 2 and 2 is not equal to 1 because i is pointing to uh, this value 1 so 2 is not equal to 1 so i'm going to decrement the value of count as 0 then again increment the value of j okay so this value is 9 and 9 is not equal to the value pointed by i therefore because the count is 0 so i'm going to make i point to this location 4 so i is now pointing to this i is now pointing to this and the count is again 1 okay then again j will point to the next location which is 5 now this value is 3 which is not equal to 9 therefore i'm going to decrement count as 0 and then again increment the value of j now j is pointing to value 1 which is not equal to 9 hence i'm going to increment i to this I will point to this we are going to make this as 1 and we are going to make this i as 6 okay again increment the value of j now j is pointing to 4 which is not equal to i which is not equal to this data hence decrement the value of count again increment the value of j 2 which is not equal to uh, the data which is not equal to 1 hence we are going to make count as 1 and make i point to this 2 so i is now pointing to this okay so i is pointing to 8 fine again increment the value of j so j is pointing to 6 6 is not equal to 2 hence we are going to make the count as 0 okay and then again increment the value of j now j is pointing to 5 now because the value of count is 0 hence we are going to make i point to this and uh, this value will going to be 1 okay now the value of j is i is going to be 10 now clearly you can see that there does not exist any majority element here but the value of count is 1 which is a major disadvantage okay you can clearly see there's no majority element but still the value of count is greater than 0 hence it is saying the 5 might be so it is saying 5 might be a candidate a candidate of majority element five might be a candidate of majority element but we are not sure but still we have to check whether five is a candidate of majority element or not now the second step here is to write a loop which is just going to go through the entire array i mean go to the entire array from the beginning and count count the number of occurrence the number of occurrence of the candidate of the candidate of majority element number of occurrence of the candidate of the majority element so now you can clearly see that this uh, first step which is find candidate may find a majority element it may not find a majority element that is why we require the sec second step check if the element that is obtained by the first step is a majority element or not now can you find out what is the time complexity of the first step just think about it what will be the time complexity of the first step so the time complexity of this statement is order of 1 but the time complexity of this loop is going to be order of n so to find a majority element to find the candidate of the majority element from this to find candidate of majority element of majority element it is going to take order of n time this is a step 1 but step two is uh, to check or verify it is a majority element it is again going to take order of n time because you have to go through the entire array once so hence the time complexity will be order of n plus order of n which is again going to be order of n and because we are not using any extra space here 
because we are not using any extra space here that is why the space complexity is going to be order of one okay now this is pretty simple this is very easy we have already seen this example but uh, let me explain you with one more example here the same algorithm with one more example so that it might be clear to you but if you are facing any problem just let me know i'll resolve the issue i mean i'll try to solve your problems okay thank you so much for watching